Hey guys, it's Tyrannosaur, and I'm coming with another classic vanilla dungeon speed run. This one is going to be a Dire Mall West, and this run was actually completed in a dungeon speedrun competition that I hosted. And one thing to note about this run and about this competition was that there was a restriction on classes. So you could only have a maximum of one of each class. So while this run is, I believe, the fastest DM West in the world, it's important to note that this was done without what might be considered the optimum comp. So there's a chance that someone could come in and do this strategy or do a similar strategy and actually have a faster DM West. But as far as I know, this is the fastest DMS, DM West run in the world. Um, so like I said, this was part of a dungeon speedrunning competition that I hosted. I will have a link to that down below. Um, and yeah, we can just jump right into this. So this is again a DM West. Um, so this group, uh, it's Rewind. That might be a guild name that some people recognize. Um, as part of this competition, in addition to only having a maximum of one of each class, every group had to enter in this, I guess, left or south doorway. And they had to pull those three treants on the left. And the timer started when they engaged those treants. So just so that I could keep everyone's runs, um, I guess, on equal footing, I had them do it that way. For anyone who's been checking out the Dungeon Cleave, um, www.dungeoncleave.com, and our Discord, we have actively been talking about rule sets and stuff for TBC Heroic Dungeon Speedrunning. And one of the things we've talked about is how runs will start. So... This is just an example of, in a dungeon like this, where there isn't like a gate that you open, like in Stratholm, how do you get the dungeon started? So we opted to have it be um, that players would have to pull and kill these treants. So that's what they're doing here first. This group, um, just to go through the classes real quick, is Warrior, Hunter, Rogue, Mage, Priest. Um, so again, they could not have more than one of any class. And so I think that's why you're seeing the hunter and maybe why you're seeing the rogue. The the mage, priest, and warrior, I think, would all have been in this group regardless. So as they get in here and they jump into this, the one thing to notice is as soon as Pukin, the warrior, runs up in here, he drops a target to me in the middle to pull all of those uh, mana voids into the middle and get them all grouped up so that they can AoE them down that much faster. So you're going to see a lot of target dummy usage throughout this, especially when they pull those pylons. And at this point, you may notice that they're they're doing something strange here, which is they are running straight down into the doorway to go to the interior area to uh, where the final two pylons are before engaging Amalthar. So that means that they have skipped two pylons that are actually up above um, where they came down. This is something that will come into play later. Um, you'll also see that they are missing a member of their team. So right now we have the warrior, the hunter, the rogue, and the priest down here, and the mage is missing. So while these four are pushing through here, and they're gonna come in here and go to the left um, and go and clear another pylon, the mage is missing. Um, we will see where the mage is in just a little bit. Um, I don't know if there is a timer I don't see a timer anywhere on here, um, but I will share with you guys what the final time is at the end of this competition. So they're getting in here. This is now the second pylon that they have cleared. Um, I believe they dropped another target dummy just to get these all grouped up again, and this four-man crew is just AoEing all of these down. Um, taking quite a bit of damage. These guys are very bursty, but... If you are aware of what's going on, I think that you can handle this pretty well, especially in the gear that these guys had. I'm pretty sure this run took place um, during Phase 5, so there's no Nax gear on any of these players, but there is a lot of AQ-40 gear. One thing here, too, is they accidentally pull this patrol. So there's these big patrols of these Wind Elementals that you can skip if you're running a DM West, and I think most groups typically do, but because they were trying to move so quickly, they ended up running straight into one of these patrols. They have to clear it and kill it. Luckily, it doesn't seem to affect them very much. 
As they move through here too, you'll see, I think most of them are popping elixirs of demon slaying just to have that up and ready for when they fight Immelthar. Now they're running over here to what would be the last pylon, but again, we haven't seen those two, the two pylons that are kind of on that, like, I guess, third story, second story, whatever you want to call it, um, outside of this area. And we will be seeing those soon, dropping another target dummy just to group mobs up so that they can cleave them down. Able to kill two or three of them before the target dummy finally goes down. And then after the target dummy goes down, I believe, um, they're just, he's just using Demo Shout and other things to keep these grouped up while they cleave the rest of them down. So this is going to be the third of five pylons down, and they still have two pylons to go. And this is when, this is kind of where things are going to get interesting. They're avoiding that patrol, watching it, and there we see it. In the top right, we see Mr. Mage showing up. So... There you'll see are all of the... So there's a lot of mobs right there, all right? It's not just the two pylons worth. There's actually a ton of ghosts, a ton of skeletons, a ton of other mobs. And you're gonna see the mage is going in there. I believe the mage is Petri Flasking. And then these four are running in. They are popping Light of a Loon, Sappers, and then everything else they can. And they are AOing all this down while immune to damage. So you're gonna see it's ticking down. The Light of a Loon is falling off now on basically everyone in the party and everything is dead they're getting the last couple mobs cleaned up here and then they are going to be sprinting across to Immelthar so they're worried about this patrol right here luckily it turns around on them running straight towards Immelthar I think they do get this one extra mana void here yes they do but they're just going to drag it inside Grabbing Immelthar here. And you're actually going to see here, um, the hunter's going to yank aggro and actually hang on to it. And they're going to kite Immelthar towards the doorway that leads to Prince. Because the the only required boss in here was Prince. Um, but in order to gain access to, in order to have Prince be there, you do have to kill Immelthar. So they're going to get Immelthar down at the you know edge of this area here. Um, they did pull some extra mobs here. But instead of actually fighting these mobs, they are doing... Kind of what we saw in that uh, full strat competition where uh, they're just ignoring these mobs. Because when you come into this room, the prince is actually down below and there's a, the ramp to get down here is a ways off. Um, all they really have to do is run and jump off this edge and then they have plenty of time to come in here and engage prince. So they're able to come over here, get prince down. Um... I will have to double check the timer here. I think they even say like in chat, he says time. Um, so the final time for this run, for this DM West run was five minutes and 53 seconds. So from them pulling those first treants at the very beginning to them killing Prince, it was five minutes and 53 seconds. The next fastest time that I that is on the leaderboards that I've ever seen is seven minutes and 18 seconds. So these guys are over a minute faster than any other group. And it was just, it's crazy. Because we don't actually really know what the ma what happened with the mage there, right? Or do we? Um, so this is that same run. And this is the mage pers mage's perspective. So we're going to jump into this. And we're going to get to take actually an in-depth look at what the mage was doing while the other four members of the team ran straight to the interior and started clearing those two pylons um, kind of like outside of Imlthar. So again, this is the very start of the run. You see Pukin going in there, dropping the target dummy. Um, the mage doesn't even help with these mobs at all. The mage is already on a mission, moving out here, getting across, making sure to avoid these, these big tree patrols, um, and heading upstairs to those two pylons. So this is kind of a scary area because there are invisible mobs here. I think that they did they do have an idea of where the invisible mobs patrol and when they patrol because they did I didn't include it in here but they, they did scout and sort of reset and do some mind visioning before the run started so I think they're aware of that. Using the blink you just saw to skip mobs so if you just ran against that wall you would pull those mobs but the blink allows the mage to skip them and then they're going to run across here and jump up and they aggro these mobs but they are up on this ledge um, but even then instead of instead of waiting for the mobs to 
to de-aggro. They, they just pop a swiftness pot. They come over here, they get a blizzard off, they aggro all these, um, and then they jump and continue. So pulling a lot of mobs, they I don't know if it's on, intentional or not, but they pull a couple skeletons and the ghost, and then they're going to move across to the second pylon. Uh, they pop a Skull of Impending Doom, another just speed boost item. So they come up here, they get the Frost Nova. So again, up on this ledge area, I'm pretty sure mobs will reset if you spend too much time up here. So jumping down so that they don't lose all the first pile of mobs, then jumping back up, getting slow fall up, and then jumping. And you see as soon as they jump off here, all the mobs that they just aggroed are going to start coming down this way. So that's two full pylons worth of the mana voids, multiple ghosts, um, multiple skeletons, and then whatever gets picked up on the way down. So this is a ton of mobs. Um, you would think, oh, the mage is just going to run back to his friends now, and they're going to they'll deal with it then. But actually, what needs to happen now is the mage needs to get all these mobs grouped up, because everyone popping light of a loon to go in and sapper and stuff doesn't mean anything if the mobs are all spread out and you aren't able to kill them all um, within that light of a loon time frame. So this mage, is, this mage has the extra job of ensuring that all the mobs are grouped up as, as good as they can get it. So you'll see tons of ghosts just worrying about getting the ghosts grouped up at this point. Um, throwing down blizzards, trying to get them all into a smaller pack. Taking a fair bit of damage, but I think, I mean, before they started this, I'm pretty sure they, they put up, like, arcane protection potions, um, frost protection potions, everything. Um, got silenced right there, which is one of the reasons I think that the mage starts moving out. Um, but does continue to throw down blizzards just to try again, just trying to get all these mobs grouped up so that they can really maximize the amount of damage um, that they're able to put out once everything finally shows up. That way they're not having to deal with killing a bunch of mobs over the course of a long period of time after Light of a Loon has faded, um, which probably would have killed them. I think a big difference between uh, this mage actually successfully grouping these up um, or just like grabbing them all and running in here, like it's, it's you know, life or death what this mage is doing right now. So I think the mage right now is at the point where we saw them earlier. Yes, so the whole group is on the other side of this doorway. The mage is over here. They're still continuing to cast Blizzard, continuing to try to group everything up. You'll see his group members are there waiting eagerly. He comes in here and then I believe right here, oh, ice block. So not a Petroflask, just, just ice blocking. The whole group comes in here, pops their light of a loon. Um, the mage pops a light of a loon. Everyone's AOEing, blasting all these down. And that's how you do it. If you, all you have to do, guys, in order to match or beat this run is to level alliance characters, have them all be in AQ40, you know, PvP gear, all that. Save your light of a loons, and then for some random one-off dungeon speedrun competition hosted by some, you know, weird-looking dude with a mustache, you use your light of a loon at the exact right time to burn down two pylons worth of mobs plus all the trash in between. That's all you gotta do. That's all. Not a big deal. Uh, so you'll see, again, killing Imlthar, kind of dragging it towards the doorway, and then they're gonna move through and kill Prince. This is, I mean, this is an insane run. I honestly felt super special that they were even willing to pop their Light of Balloons in, in this because this was just a, a competition that I put on. I feel like Light of Balloon is one of those things that a lot of Alliance players, they, they covet. They hang on to it as long as they possibly can. So for them to, for five of these guys to decide to use it from this competition, I felt super honored. Um, but yeah absolutely insane five minutes 53 seconds was their t their final time and oh man it just made me this was one of the first competitions where things i think just like went, went you know incredibly well um in a dungeon speedrun competition and really showed what people are capable of and what they're willing to do to get these super fast times so this was in just amazing competition to host and to watch and i think it got a lot more people excited about running 
dungeons in vanilla and doing more of the speedrun competitions that followed this one. And for me, it's it just, you know, it's one of the things that lit a fire under me for what we're going to do in TBC. So this is my, the, my point where I'm going to pitch T our TBC dungeon and raid speedrunning website and community, Dungeon Cleave. If you go to dungeoncleave.com, there will be a link in the description. We are going to do more of this kind of stuff, these types of competitions, but on a much broader scale, on a much more professional scale. Um, we want it to become something big, something that's, you know, like Mythic Plus Dungeon competitions, um, something that's like an eSport, honestly. And so that's our goal, that's what we're working towards. We're gonna have competitions as we move into TBC. We're already planning the first one. We're just trying to figure out how far into TBC um, before we host it. We're all very eager and excited to get that going. So be looking for that. Um, check out the website, join our Discord. We want it to feel like a community as well and we want your feedback. So um, for rules, for different things, for ideas, for unique competitions, all that stuff, we want the community to feel like they can come in and voice their opinion. So yeah, come come join us, come see what we're doing with that. This is um, the second to last one of these videos. I know that we are currently in the pre-patch as of making this video. I would like to have the final video, which is going to be the lower Blackrock Spire run up by early next week. That way moving into TBC, I will have covered all of the super fast runs that I have access to. And we can transition this into analyzing and doing commentary and looking at heroic TBC dungeon speedruns. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I appreciate you as always. Um, if you liked it, hit the like button. Um, consider subscribing to the channel. Happy hunting.